brought you to Arcus? What what is the compelling story that you see there that would interest you in in uh, joining the company? Yeah. So um, uh, you may know at VMware, so I was there fourteen years, and um, I think through my time at VMware, I sort of saw the cloud transition. I saw a lot of like the movement from private clouds to what is now Amazon, Azure, Google, et cetera, coming in and creating the public cloud. And it was obviously a pretty big um, shift and disruption in the, in, not just in the infrastructure landscape, but in the application landscape for our customers. And personally, I feel like these sort of changes happen kind of once every maybe decade or decade and a half. Uh, and uh, what I am convinced and was convinced of even before joining Arcus is that we are actually on that next transition uh, where while a lot of the conversation right now still revolves around cloud and hybrid and multi-cloud and so on, uh, I fundamentally believe that um, we are moving to a much more distributed, latency sensitive, um, and infinitely more programmable architecture that is embodied by the edge. Um, and as a result, I am super passionate about wanting to be in the space of enabling the edge to happen as well as making sure that customers have the right paths to get there uh, and then the right transition strategies and the right economics to land on edge infrastructure in a way in which they can create applications in a much more agile and cost-effective way than they can do today. I'm also convinced that one of the big bottlenecks in the ability for customers to actually make that transition is the network and how the network behaves and what kind of network infrastructure is deployed. And that is what brought me to Arcus. Now I have to say that my engagement with Arcus started uh, when I, uh, uh, I launched a SPAC after I left VMware and through the SPAC, I had started engaging with Arcus because it was sort of within the frame of the kinds of things I was looking at. And the more I engaged with the company and the deeper I understood the layers of technology that the company has built, the more convinced I got that this is a truly differentiated both technically and from a business sense, but also it is uh, one which is a uh, diamond in the rough in the sense of uh, with the right kind of um, addition uh, to the business models and go to market and so on, the technology can be uh, very critical in enabling customers to make that edge transition and move into the edge infrastructure, uh, even though it wasn't necessarily packaged or marketed as such. So what we have done as part of this announcement is we've got three components to it. One is my coming in as CEO. The second is launching the vision around what we are calling the Arcus Connected Edge or ACE. And then the third is the uh, fact that a, a few strategic partners like uh, Liberty Global, uh, like SoftBank, uh, like Samsung Next have come in as uh, investors in our next round of funding. And so this is the combination of news, but to answer your question very directly, I have been looking at the space and I've been convinced that there is this next disruption taking place. And over the course of the past few weeks, came to the conclusion that if I have to go and operationally drive that, then Arcus is a great place for me to do that. And, uh, and so when the invitation came, I accepted and so here I am. Okay, so with um, the the vision behind Ace, is that in some sense a repositioning of the company from core to edge? Um, yes, so I think it is definitely a repositioning of the company in a way in which it takes the network fabric that was that was either built or being built and deploying customers and making it much more focused on the 
edge from the standpoint of not just the service provider edge, but also the enterprise edge. Okay. And so I want to be a little careful because sometimes core can mean many things for many people. So as an example, we are very much in the business of taking a service provider that is in the process of deploying their 5G infrastructure. And as part of their 5G infrastructure, if they look at what kind of routing connectivity they need from that 5G backend into uh, as they get down to the edges and then furthermore to the deploying services to the enterprise uh, through potentially a mech-like architecture. This is where we are working with service providers to enable them to get down to those distributed levels of um, uh, capacity through the Arcus Foundation or the Arcus Connected Edge. Now, equally on the other side, we're working with enterprises that kind of behave like service providers uh, because they have a large footprint, a large distributed footprint, like a retailer with a large distributed footprint of retail stores, as an example, uh, or for that matter, a financial services organization uh, or, um, or an investment bank or something with a number of like retail customers that are trading from their endpoints. And these endpoints could be laptops or mobile endpoints, or it could be simply a telco trying to deploy a 5G network that has, again, a very dense antenna network uh, for the uh, band of spectrum that they are dealing with. These are all examples of large scale distributed points of presence that require a very massive scale reliable network that can be programmable and that can create and deploy applications in a very agile way and that's okay. what we're focused on okay are the hyperscale clouds are, are they allies or are they uh, rivals or partners or how would arcus see them so we would see them as partners and potential customers okay uh, and so today for example now again Today, a lot of the hyperscale clouds depend fairly extensively on uh, vendor hardware for networking. Uh, and well, I mean, they might depend on some combination of Cisco, Juniper, Arista, et cetera, for their routing and switching needs. Um, even as the hyperscalers are doing a lot of invention in-house, and even as a number of them are getting into everything from semiconductor to software, we look at that as uh, they will always want some level of inter-cloud connectivity. They will want some level of multi-cloud that they can enable and bring to their customers uh, and also extend their architectures into the edge. Now, fundamentally, I believe and we believe that taking an existing cloud architecture and shoehorning it to be uh, so just a smaller form factor edge is the wrong approach. We should be thinking about the edge as an edge native infrastructure where we are kind of ground up thinking about what kind of network fabric it needs. And so uh, I am looking to work with the hyperscalers as partners in enabling that to happen for customers. Uh, so we would very much look at it as an opportunity to, like I said, provide our software footprint, both with and top of hyperscaler infrastructures as services that customers can consume mm -hmm. uh, and complement what they themselves are doing in-house. Okay. And when you talk about the, the capabilities of this, this fabric, how much of it is tied into the switching silicon uh, the, from you know, Broadcom or Novium, Marvell, et cetera, and then are you, would you need to align with those kind of companies? Yes, so um, first of all, we are not, um, we're not um, wedded to a single architecture uh, in a way in which we cannot add value to other architectures, okay? So we are purely a software layer that can in fact work with multiple uh, processor architectures. Uh, with that said, um, Broadcom is a very strong partner of ours. 
Uh, and so we are, of course, putting a lot of energy and emphasis into enabling customers where that happens to be their choice. Uh, and uh, from there on, as we kind of uh, look out into the future, a lot of these uh, decisions will be made based on customer choices. So to the extent, uh, I mean, we are obviously a startup, and so we cannot afford to go in and like enable 15 different things all simultaneously at the same time. But we are absolutely constructed architecturally. In fact, kudos to um, Kayur, the CTO founder and the team that is there inside Arcus for having done this in a way in which we can in fact very efficiently take on a new processor architecture and extend our operating system uh, to be equally efficient on top of that architecture. So nothing prevents us from doing that. There's nothing that causes us and we just need to put the energy in it to make sure that that gets added to our compatibility list of hardware that we work on top of. Okay. Uh, you, you also mentioned uh, the telco opportunity or you know, extending the edge capabilities there and, and surely that would uh, coincide with the 5G expansion and ORAN opportunities and virtualizing that whole aspect of the network. How, how do you see that playing out, the, the ORAN opportunity? Yeah, so I would say these are a little bit side by side in the following way. So as you look at the core and then now the radio access network and uh, virtualizing that or for that matter, containerizing that, and operating the radio workloads in a telecom 5G setup. Think about that as network functions that are then deployed on a compute infrastructure. And in my previous role inside VMware, as, as you know, uh, I was responsible for that telco cloud. So it was the infrastructure on top of which these RAN workloads could land equally well as much as the uh, carrier core workloads. Now, suppose you take the entirety of that infrastructure and you actually have your, um, I mean, let's just say you have your ORAN fabric built out and you have your RIC and you have your applications, XFs, et cetera, that are built on top of the RIC architecture. But now what you want to do is essentially um, do the backend uh, provider edge routing that then connects this infrastructure to the rest of the world. This is where uh, the Arcus solution, the Arcus connected edge, as well as the routing capabilities that the team at Arcus has so expertly built starts coming into play. So your RAN infrastructure, if you want to make sure that that is not just virtualized and containerized and has its own application ecosystem, but forms part of a broader connected edge where the rest of the edges are either enterprises and or uh, other clouds, then Arcus then forms that fabric or that network that then connects between these edge infrastructures, right? So think about it at a uh, a somewhat orthogonal layer compared to what is happening in the ORAN landscape and what's happening to the RIC workloads. Okay, all right, uh, interesting. So I, I guess last question would be, uh, you highlighted the third part of your announcement is the, the new investors. So, you know, what, what are they bringing to the table? Yeah, so each one of them is actually quite strategic in uh, the ability for us to look at them as uh, a partner, as a channel, uh, and then potentially as a customer as well, uh, which is um, uh, the combination of uh, SoftBank, Liberty Global, and Samsung Next. These are all obviously very uh, significant leaders in the landscape of everything from telecom services to um, media delivery uh, uh, and content uh, to uh, essentially 5G infrastructure, right? And uh, mm -hmm. when, we, uh, when we were, and again, this is sort of uh, even prior to my decision coming to 
uh, Orcus, when the company was looking at the kinds of investments that would make sense, in addition to, of course, the existing VCs re-upping their, uh, their uh, stake in the company, um, there was a careful choice to pick these partners because they are as deeply interested in this evolution of the 5G and Edge network as much as we are. And so uh, the fact that they are now putting kind of their money where their mouth is and committing to an investment to see us be successful is, is very strategically important for us as we continue to work with them and build our partnership with them. Um, excellent. So those are all of uh, my questions here today. And anything else you would highlight? No, I think I just wanted to summarize by saying that it's super exciting for me to come and be here and lead this company as CEO at this juncture, because I think as I started saying, I'm convinced that um, uh, independent of my timing, which is somewhat fortuitous, uh, the industry is at a point of inflection where the existing network architectures do need to be transitioned into edge native or edge capable and 5G readiness. Uh, and uh, I am just, um, uh, I mean, I can't wait to get uh, talking to all the customers and making sure that they are, in fact, getting on to that, uh, that train and uh, making that move into the edge. Mm -hmm.